Hi, my name is Travis Matthews. I'm the director of Discreet, which is premiering here in Berlinale in the panorama section. How you doing? Come on in. Can I offer you anything to drink? Like tequila? There's also water. No, I'm good. Have a, uh, stand right here for me. Face that direction. I'm gonna go ahead and blindfold you. Let me know if this is too tight. Welcome, Travis Matthews, director of uh, Discreet. Your film, Discreet, is a set in Texas in a very rural setting. Yeah. And it's dominated by mid-aged or older men. Uh -huh. There's only a few young people. So, and you get like right away in the beginning a few details a rap dead corpse that's gonna thrown into a river uh -huh. and like quite peaceful images as well mm -hmm. but at the same time the viewer realizes right away that something is wrong yes. so basically it's a it's a thriller uh -huh. how did you come up with this idea and this setting in Texas um, two questions um, the first about Texas I was um, I was in development and pre-production on another project that didn't end up happening that that had me in texas for a very long time mm -hmm. and when that project fell apart and i was in texas and i was driving around in in the van that is in the film oh i was really um i wanted to do something that felt urgent i wanted to do something that had bite to it and i wanted to do something that um was a response to the environment around me and the environment around me meaning the immediate environment of of Texas, of Central Texas, but also the the emerging sort of cultural zeitgeist moment in America, um, which, when I would turn on the AM radio in the van, was very much like there were these sounds or voices, these conservative voices, that felt a little bit like um, the drumbeat to war, and it felt. You know, I grew up in rural Ohio, so I'm familiar with conservative people Setting. and country people. Mm -hmm. But this felt different in that it felt like there was these people who used to be on the fringes were now people who were getting louder voices that were being listened to, and they were also louder voices with more power. And um, there was an anxiety in the air. There was a fear in the air that's, that's even worse now because of the reality we're living in in America. Um, but I wanted to write something that captured that anxiety in the air and the, the sort of percolating um, almost precursor of trauma that I feel like that I feel like a lot of people are um, a lot of progressives in, in the states right now are very much like in, in uh, a constant state of um, it, it, trauma sounds exagger exaggerated or hyperbole but it is like this sort of like intense and startling um, need to act and need to be involved and when we were we were beginning to write the story um, I wanted to capture all of that but I wanted to I wanted to have it be channeled through a character to do like a character study and I wanted it to be channeled through this character of Alex um, who's a drifter and um, he's coming home to Texas to um, find closure with his estranged mother and in the process he learns something that um, that basically thrusts him into this world, which is where the thriller kind of elements start, thrusts him into a world where um, he's re-traumatized and he has to kind of navigate his way through this rural underworld, you know. I mean, what was quite um, intriguing to me that you have like this clear separation between like his inner world and the outer world, 
and I mean in both I, I felt Alex your main protagonist uh -huh. didn't feel at home in a way so he's shooting basically yeah. like images or footage of like highways like this yeah. is a this is a sign for like being on the run like not being home and at the same time like the voice of this YouTube channel lady Mandy yeah. Mandy yeah that uh, it's a kind of esoteric channel isn't it so I mean this is like combined in a very nice way and you don't know precisely where where the borders are between like inner world and outer world yeah right? correct yeah so I wanted I wanted Alex's journey to be this sort of mashed up mix of him trying to use kind of arcane and primitive tools to to try and find peace, to try and like find calm, to try and just get over his trauma. And we're introduced to him as he's using these techniques, which is the video that you're talking about. And he's inspired by Mandy because Mandy is a character who has this YouTube channel where she does this thing that's actually very popular uh, called ASMR. Mm -hmm. And ASMR is a is a this this uh, online community of people, mostly women, but not exclusively, where they have these 3D microphones and they whisper into the microphones or they make noises that are supposed to calm people who have PTSD. And so he gets turned on to this and she's, she's encouraging her viewers to make these videos of things that are familiar with them, but also things that um, are repetitive. Sounds that are repetitive, visuals that are repetitive, but things that are, in her words, your hum. Not home, but hum, like H-U-M, like mmm. Mm -hmm. And for Alex, somebody who's a drifter who lives on the road, the freeways are his home. And it's also the thing that, that feels familiar, it's the thing that calms him, but it's also the thing that constrains him. So as the movie moves forward, you know, what we wanted to do was to create kind of a surreal space where, what you're getting at, a surreal space where what is meant to be something that's healing or, or uh, supportive or um, on his side is also confused with what is dangerous or what is um, um, just harmful. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and so they, they begin to weave into each other as the, as the film progresses. There's a quite interesting image for just like what you described. Alex, the main protagonist, uh -huh in the bed with the one that was the perpetrator that abused him sexually as a kid, as I got you it right. Don't give away a spoiler. Oh. It's a spoiler, but okay. Oh, here it's we supposed, go. It's supposed to be a, an image that is revealed at the end, but no, continue. We, there we go. So, but this is like precisely the image what I thought, like, I mean, when you don't, don't know in what direction it's going to be. I mean, I was uh -huh. like, what thinking, he's gonna abuse somebody too, uh -huh. but finally this doesn't happen. So, I mean, uh -huh. how did you come up with this idea? Like, the way well, that- Well, I, I, I think for Alex, I think that John, who is the, the older man that you're referring to, who, who abused him, I think that um, for Alex, as, mu as much as he loathes this person and wants to destroy this person for what he did to him, I think that John also knows him more intimately and honestly than probably anybody else that Alex has had um, relationships with, whether they're, they're romantic or sexual or friendship relationships. I think, I think he believes that John knows him more than anybody else, knows him more intimately, not sexually, but just intimately who he is. Um, and so there's this passion, basically, to destroy the thing that, that traumatized you while also wanting to be close to it because of um, the intimacy that, that is there. So, um, just like hopping in the topics. So, I mean, your film is a great example of suspension. Did uh -huh. you have like the genre right away in the beginning when you started to, it was like clear to you this is gonna be a thriller or? I, you know, I mean, there's like some famous saying that you always make three movies, the one you write, the one that you're filming, and the one that you actually edit and you have at the end. And I always knew, I always knew on some level that we wanted it to be um, suspenseful, for sure. 
would it end up becoming the kind of thriller that it is? I wasn't quite sure from the beginning, but um, I wanted to do something that was a little bit of a departure from my previous work, which was, my previous work has been much more, um, you know, ar around uh, gay sexuality, masculinity, intimacy, all these things that are still in this world. But I wanted to kind of shift my point of view a little bit and have it almost, almost edge up to what you could say is a horror film, you know? And I want to make a horror film, so I, I wanted this to be... Um, Stepping Stone isn't fair to the movie because I'm, I'm proud of the movie that I have here, but I wanted, to, I wanted to make a film that proved to myself more than anybody else, really, that I could move into genre filmmaking while also holding on to elements of, of my previous work. That said, I also felt like um, the political climate that I wanted to deal with the um, anxiety that was in the air, the tension that was in the air in rural Texas when I was, when I was there. Um, these were all things that tossed into the mix, I feel, lend themselves to being a thriller or lend themselves to being something that um, has anxiety and tension in it, you know? So what do you think, like, the, the world changed after the elections in America? and pretty much for you as an American. Yeah. So what do you think, what's going to be the effect on your upcoming project? My upcoming project? Yeah, I mean, you, you mean? Will, I mean you will work on another film, so yeah. what will change this on, like, I, on, the, on the subject, for example? I mean, you said already that you wanted to do like, different movies than you did mm -hmm, before. Like, mm -hmm. you moved like, someone like, from this gay content like, to more a different like anxiety for example uh -huh. but so what's like I feel a responsibility the I feel a responsibility as a filmmaker with a voice with a small megaphone to um, to do work that is political and do work and when I say political I don't mean capital P like I'm gonna be a Michael Moore and like do a documentary that's about politics but I mean I think that our democracy in America is under attack in ways that, not even in my lifetime, I don't think our country has ever experienced. And clearly, uh, what happens in our country has ripple effects for the world. And there's an authoritarian regime that is in the White House right now, and um, it's terrifying. And I feel responsibility, and I, and I want to encourage other people to use whatever tools they have to let their voices be heard. It doesn't mean everybody needs to make a movie, no. but I feel like this is not the time for people to be silent. This is not the time for people to isolate. This is the time for people to let their feelings be known and to let the world know that this is not acceptable to us. So to answer your question, I feel like I can't imagine doing projects in the near future that do not have that energy and that DNA mixed into whatever the story is going to be. Are you actually working on a project? Or are you just like finished? You said like... I am, but I can't talk about it. I'm sorry. Okay. We won't spoil it. I am, but I'll tell you that, that what I just shared in, term, in terms of um, the politics being in the mix, mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely in the mix with the next project. I'm very curious. Thanks, yeah. Travis Matthews, for coming. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.